بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم اینڈ السلام علیکم لیڈیز اینڈ جنلمن ویلکم بیک ٹو آر ویری ایکسٹینسو کمپریہنسو اینڈ انٹرسٹنگ ماڈیول آن چیلنجز آف ایتھیکل لونگ بیہیوریل ایتھکس اینڈ ایتھیکل لیڈرشپ لیڈیز اینڈ جنلمن ان دا پاس سیشنز وی بین لوکنگ ایٹ دا روٹ کازز آف ان ایتھیکل بیہیویئر اینڈ ٹوڈے وی آر گوئنگ ٹو لوک ایٹ اٹ فرام اے پوائنٹ آف ویو آف سوسائٹی ایز اے ہول اینڈ ہاؤ وی ٹین ٹو ڈس ریگارڈ سوسائٹی ٹو این ایٹیٹیوڈ of apathy and what is apathy indifference and wherever there is indifference there are going to be problems and there are going to be fissures and there are going to be barriers there are going to be constraints and we would not be able to find the best way forward for humanity as a whole or as an organization ladies and gentlemen when we talk about uh, the different lack of regard for society nowadays we know that the most important aspect for the next decade for the next century is the climate and is climate change and is the environment and is moving towards a more green environment a more green economy more green products and more green services so this is something which is now overwhelming and is considered to be a very important subsidiary topic for corporate governance because when we are talking about governance we are talking about the overall betterment of all stakeholders and if we do not tend to protect our environment then we are going to be compromising the future of our generations and therefore i think that this is a very very important topic ladies and gentlemen now first of all this issue of pollution now when we talk about pollution it could be pollution of the water it could be pollution of the air and it could be pollution of the land now just look around ourselves if we look at pakistan we look at asia or we look at the whole globe we have these problems we have this impure air which is creating health problems health issues we have this air pollution which is poisoning our rain which is poisoning our crops which is poisoning our our children and again what we see is that this pollution is basically generated by different companies by different industries and by different sectors from various to uh, different variables we look at how the automobile industry is contributing to this air pollution in such an extensive way these uh, different contaminations which are taking place across the whole world actually more in the developed world just look at what china is doing to the air through its different contaminations by uh, its industrial uh, complexes its coal generating electricity and also the fact that different chemical factories and different textiles they are also emitting different contaminations and the automobile industry is contributing to all of that extensively now even the airline industry just like we see that in covid what happened was because traveling and transportation uh, became uh, nearly non existent and people were not traveling so therefore we see that the earth regenerated and the atmosphere became cleaner and became more pure and the air which was full of poisonous gases became more breathable now again what we are seeing is that now post covid this whole thing is coming about but the good thing is is that in the automobile industry what we are seeing is this conversion into uh, electric cars or hybrid cars and by the year 2030 we are going to see that most major automobile manufacturers around the world would be producing electric cars and therefore electric cars have zero emission and another thing good thing that we are seeing is is that there are now alternate Uh, sources of electricity generation so we're looking at we're looking at wind uh, electricity we are looking at water generated electricity we're looking at wave generated electricity we are looking at solar uh, uh, solar energy we're looking at different forms of energy which would actually ensure that the fossil fuel burning uh, electricity which we are generating would be minimized and even nuclear gen- energy that also is more cleaner except that later on uh, there is a problem Uh, in basically uh, getting rid of the nuclear waste but that can also be done scientifically and in a better way without contaminating the air or the land now similarly what we see is is that many companies and industries are throwing their waste into river beds or into the ocean or into the sea and that itself is a major pollutant and a contamination and what we see is it's basically affecting the life or the fishes or the different species which are found in water and it is also compromising on our drinking we don't find clean drinking water and you do know that it is projected in the future that wars will be fought 
on water because we don't have clean drinking water. And another thing that we are seeing is that due to the greenhouse uh, gases and the greenhouse effect which is taking place, we see that the Arctic and the Antarctica and the South and North Poles, they all are being compromised and the sea level is rising gradually, which again is going to be a major contamination and a major problem for our lands because all of those cities which are low level, they are going to become inundated with water. And this all is very daunting and also very horrifying. And therefore, it is our responsibility as individuals and also as corporations that we take care of the air, of the land and the water. And we basically ensure that we have green practices and secondly, that this whole world, the land, the sea and the air are very important ingredients and components of future life, which have to be protected at all cost. And besides that, what has to happen is, is that as corporations and as institutions, we have to have recycling plants. Whatever contamination we are spreading or coming out, the effluents, be it air or be it water, they have to be recycled and then ensured that uh, we can protect our environment in a better way. And by protecting our environment, we are actually protecting our future generations. And then we see the, the pollution which is on the land through uh, the garbage waste, uh, which is accumulating through uh, what plastic bags, uh, which have uh, such a large half-life, they cannot uh, become absorbed into the soil. And then all of these different things that we are throwing about, not realizing its implications and the future problems for our future generations, we have to take that into consideration and move forward in a better way. So corporations have to understand that they have to, uh, they have to function uh, optimally, they have to generate profit, but not at the cost of the future or at the cost of the earth. And therefore, our laws have to be made more stringent. We have to have implementation agencies which can work in a better way and we have to have regulatory authorities which can regulate all of this and oversight authorities or oversight institutions which can ensure that these corporations, these individuals or these institutions do not damage the environment and make sure that rather than emitting poison in the air and poison in the water and poison on the land, we do away with it and we have green practices which can ensure that we have a safe, a better a more productive and a more healthy future for everyone. So again, ladies and gentlemen, what we see is that we are also indiscriminately using natural resources without any consideration what is going to happen in the future. We are a consumption-based society. Now, that is again something that has to be solved. We have to become more self-regulatory. We have to become more self-disciplined. We have to ensure that we have to see that how can we make our natural resources more sustainable? How can we ensure that whatever natural resources we have, they are going to continue and then they're going to be replenished in some, some way. So the corporations and the sectors and the different industries have to get together to plan all of this out in the context of profit generation, but not at the cost of our future generations. And then there's also marketing of unethical products, which we see everywhere, especially in the context of food. We see it in food whereby people tend to, uh, tend to give uh, fabricated or false expiry dates, where, where expiry dates uh, are changed, where there is relabeling, where the real chemicals in the food are not being disclosed. So the disclosure is not being done in the right way, where food laws are not being followed, where food quality standards are not being met, where water standards are not being met. All of this is taking place. All of these products are unethical because again, it's unethical if we are stating something that this is what it is, but it's actually not. I mean, there was a very famous ice cream in Pakistan, which would say that they have ice cream, but later on it was found that it's not ice cream. So they had to uh, eliminate the word of cream. So again, what we see is that there is a great need to be truthful and to fully disclose our products and also the marketing that we do with those products and how we tend to sell those products in the market without deceiving the customer and also ensuring that those products are not hazardous and do not harm the client. That is our responsibility as corporations and as, a, as corporate governance also. These are the things which have to be followed. We cannot, just like uh, in a film uh, of Aaron Brockovich, what we see is, is that uh, a very large company, a multinational company, was basically poisoning all of the community uh, around itself. And based upon that, what we see is that the whole community uh, was getting poisoned and they were getting cancer and they were getting ill. And the company was not willing to take the responsibility. But this one lady, Aaron Brockovich, who 
was not even a university student, but she identified the problem. She did her research and then she took on that company. And then one of the highest, uh, highest damages cases uh, in the history of law uh, was rewarded to that particular community. So again, what it requires is a multi-level responsibility by the community, uh, by the academia, by the industry, by the corporations, by the government, by the different stakeholders and by the shareholders that we cannot compromise and we will always keep the environment, we will keep the future generations always first and then profitability and sustainability. So that is very important. And then we also uh, see that there's a lot of unsafe production which is taking place. Different chemicals are taking place. They uh, become poisonous effluents. We see that there are different products which are taking place and then different industries which are basically contaminating uh, the land, the water and the air. And therefore, they also should be regulated and they should not be allowed. And we should come out with alternates. Just like in electricity, we've come out with alternates. That is very important because uh, by coming out with alternate products or alternate services, then we're going to ensure that we have a better environment and a better future. So that is the essence of uh, this very, very uh, important aspect of protecting environment, of going green, of becoming sustainable and ensuring that we truthfully, honestly make our products and do not misrepresent at the end of the day so that uh, the consumers are aware of what they are consuming and it should not be poisonous either directly or indirectly. Thank you so much everyone.